Thank you. And our final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion 6963 in the name of Christine Graham on generations working together. Uh, this debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask any member who wishes to speak in the debate to press their request to speak button now. And I call on Christine Graham to open the debate. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Perhaps I should declare an interest as a member of one of those generations. You can take your pick. I'd first like to thank all members across benches for signing this motion, allowing me to have it debated tonight. I'd also like to welcome the gallery, Mel Scrimger, manager at New Buyers Nursery, and Marie, who's a deputy manager, Claire Holmes, a carer, Elizabeth Kane or Bessie, and Diane Hamilton, residents all from New Buyers Village, George Kay, trustee, one of the trustees of, for Generations Working Together, and Kate Samuels, their communication intern. You're very welcome. And I'd also uh, like to thank the minister. I know he visited this project today, and no doubt he's going to tell us how we got on with the bean bags. But I'll leave that in limbo just now, as I know it's part of his speech. It is now. You know when you're, you know, <laughs> you know when you're out and about on constituency visits, you stumble on something even after 70 years on MSP, which is news to you. So it was on a visit to New Bar's nursery in Gore Bridge that I first learned of this intergenerational project. It was actually quite timely because a few weeks later in Channel 4, there was a four-part documentary on the interaction between a nursery located actually inside a residential home. But how many in this parliament, just like me, knew that similar programmes were already on our own doorstep in Scotland? And before I go on, just a plug for a timely event tonight hosted by Bruce Crawford, which ties in nicely to this debate. It's highlighting a report called A Good Life in Later Years. It's on from 6pm, and I hope some of the participants, I can see them, have made their way here too. But back to new buyers. New Bars Village is little more than a stone's throw from New Bars Village care home. And on, the, on that day, children will usually walk from the nursery there for their weekly and that early visit. Now, when New Bars Nursery opened at the end of May 2016, one of its main aims was to forge strong links with the community, having benefited so much from community support during the extensive renovation project. While intergenerational work was and very much still is in its infancy. Mel Scrimger, the manager, having heard of centres over in the USA that combining preschools with care homes for the elderly brought incredible benefits to both the very young and the very old, and was keen to do more than the token visit to the local care home at Harvest Festival or Christmas time, with which we are more familiar. It was not to be, in her words, tokenistic, but with regular meetings. She contacted Gail Flynn, the activities coordinator at New Bars Village, who was enthusiastic about the idea and welcomed them with open arms. Last but not least, there is Kate Samuels of Generations Working Together, but more of that later. Now, before I go any further, let me congratulate the parents and carers of the children, as well as the nursery staff, and not the least the care home staff, as it is entirely a team effort and the commitment from all these parties which makes it work. You know, some of the great assets of four-year-olds, and they have many, is their boundless curiosity, energy, and directness. On arriving at New Bar, some of the activities I've seen for myself are knock the cans down, wasn't bean bags when I was there. These were made by the New Bar's village staff, throwing the ball through holes in a makeshift cardboard wall, fishing for toy ducks in a paddling pool, which I was not successful, and lots of other activities. The children are all up for it, but so are the residents who turn up. Some in their determination to hit target are almost falling out of their wheelchairs with the effort. The children run about and retrieve the balls and take them to the residents and of course, have a go themselves. Apart from improving hand and eye coordination and improving the motor skills of both the nursery children and the residents, there is that invigorating element of competitiveness but it's the fun and the laughter from the residents and the children which I remember most. Gales of laughter and many, many smiles interspersed with the comments from the children and the residents. It's all very noisy and great fun. Then after all that noise and fun, the children settle down to their juice and the residents to their teas. 
Other events might be more sedate, such as reading stories and painting. What's so good about the whole intergeneration project is that its success just comes naturally. It's an extension of what I know through time spent with my six-year-old granddaughter. When otherwise would I have to be taken out of myself and into her world, her priorities, made to do exercise, I always try to avoid. In this project, whether the residents have grandchildren or not, that individual and special relationship between the elderly, and by the way, residents were in their 80s and 90s and one was a centenarian, young and with young children just falls into place as naturally as night follows day. The benefits in children to children and residents are there for all to see. And the staff of both Care Home and Nursery are rewarded for their commitment to the project by the laughter and chatter which fills the room just by itself. Now, there are other intergenerational projects promoted by generations working together, which is a charity dedicated to promoting that work, training, supporting and linking projects. The charity is national and an intergenerational excellence training centre it has. This has delivered training to communities, charities and individuals in person and online. It has 20 local networks across Scotland which enable local people and organisations to get together and discuss ideas for projects. It provides information, delivers support and encourages involvement to benefit all of Scotland's generations by working, learning, volunteering and living together. It can address community challenges such as ageism, loneliness and ill health. I fully commend this project, which I saw I intend to return. I've got to improve my motor skills, especially in trying to catch a duck. I won't go any further than that. You can leave it to your imagination. But I hope that other nurseries and care homes, together with parents and carers, if they're not doing this, give thought to replicating the experience in my constituency. And I look forward to contributions from other members. Thank you, presiding officer. Thank you. I call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Elaine Smith. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Um, I am uh, one of the three uh, people here who have served the time that God allocated to us, my three score years and ten, <laughs> one of the uh, three septuagenarians uh, who are present in this parliament. I'm delighted to see that the minister who responded to tonight's debate three years ago was half my age. He, he is, of course, catching up in statistical terms uh, with each uh, passing year. But I think uh, the, the, the whole issue that uh, Christine Graham brings to the Parliament today uh, relating to Newbar's village and Newbar's nursery uh, is an important one, not simply uh, for people in Gorebridge, but for people right across Scotland. As people get older, uh, it is an inevitable fact that many of their friends will no longer be with them for a variety of reasons. Um, and it becomes more difficult uh, for older people to make new friendships to replace those uh, which are no longer possible uh, because of the death of friends that they had in their youth. So connecting older people to younger people is a brilliant way of maintaining the social skills and the social interactions uh, that might otherwise be, be, be diminishing in older people's lives. Uh, I, for my own part, uh, think uh, that talking to older people uh, is a brilliant bridge back into uh, previous history uh, of our country and of our communities. I remember having chat to my sister-in-law's father-in-law, uh, Bob Monroe, wonderful fellow who who continued, he, he stopped driving when he was 96. He, he got his first pair of glasses when he was 96. Uh, he remembered them coming back from the Boer War in Victorian times and to talk to him about that experience as a comparatively young person. Um, in other words, even younger than the minister, uh, was something of great fascination and stimulated new thoughts. And I think whenever we bring the old and the young together, uh, we have that opportunity. The kids of that sort of age, they have questions of breathtaking naivety when viewed from the lofty heights of a 70-year-old like myself. How did you live without television? How did you live without a telephone? What happened in the world before there were iPads? And these are 
excellent questions to which, of course, uh, people of a certain age have a very interesting and well-developed answer. So not only are we, as the motion before us, uh, looking at eye coordination of both young and old, we're also looking at the opportunities that are created by interaction between young and old of mental stimulation. And as, uh, as our memories become less certain with age, not something that affects everyone, but a substantial number of people it does, the parts of our memory that still work well will generally be those of our youth and our infancy. So having kids come along and say, what was it like when you were my age? is a terrific way of re-energizing the mental cells uh, of older people. Um, I note uh, the, uh, the, the comment in the motion that's before us, the recommendations for similar projects elsewhere. I hope that uh, we will see this sort of thing in the northeast of Scotland, the area I represent, uh, and elsewhere, uh, because it's quite remarkable how little time and how few people connect us to distant things. My grandfather was three years old when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated on the 15th of April, 1865. This is the kind of link that makes history real for us. This is the kind of link that stimulates thinking, physical activity, and social skills. Very much to be commended indeed, presiding officer. Thank you, and I call on Elaine Smith to be followed by Ruth Maguire. Thank you, and thanks to Christine Graham for bringing this issue to the Chamber. Can I apologise, as I have to leave very quickly? I did ask to speak first because I have a branch executive meeting of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, which is actually starting right now. So forgive me if I rattle through my contribution. Um, social isolation affects far too many people in our society, as we know, but as the population grows older, the number of people beyond pension age experiencing it is increasing every year. In Age Scotland's No One Should Have No One campaign showed that 100,000 older people feel lonely most or all of the time, and over 200,000 go half a week or more with no visitors or even phone calls from anyone. And in times gone by, the older members of our society would have spent their final years with their families, keeping that connection with the community throughout their lives and um, with children, I suppose, in the family, keeping everyone young. Sadly, that's not as possible as it once was, and many of our family members take the decision to move into a care home. And perhaps that's because their children are all living away or they don't have any children or they simply can't accommodate their parents' particular needs. There are many, many different reasons. But to show that older people have a lot to offer and should be valued, I think we must make them part of the conversation about the future and with future generations. So what better way to do that than to bring young and old together to impart wisdom and deliver a bit of sunshine into each other's lives? The benefits of bringing old and young together is as much about imparting knowledge as we've heard from uh, Christine Graham and Stuart Stevenson, whether it's history for the kids or teaching her grand how to use the internet as it is about just giving someone company. There's so many things that can be exchanged. And schemes like this are of great value to our society. And as Generations Together say, it's all about working, learning, volunteering and living together. And the initiative highlighted by Christine Graham and Goldbridge is doing exactly that. And I certainly hope that we see similar projects rolled out right across Scotland. This was also something shown well, I think, by the Channel 4 documentary, Old People's Homes for Four-Year-Olds. And in that, we saw the joy that a young child can bring to the life of someone who may only spend time with people of their own age and the care staff, something else that Christine Graham has touched upon. Also, our own Equal Opportunities Committee identified this in 2015 in the report Age and Social Isolation, in which Derek Young from Age Scotland said, the need for contact is an innate human need in the same way that feeling hungry or thirsty or tired or in pain is, and I agree with that. I welcome the fact that there's a strategy to tackle loneliness and isolation uh, in Scotland in the programme for government. The, the Minister may be saying more about that, and I apologise again for missing that, um, and I hope we see that delivered soon. And I was equally glad to see my friend and party colleague Rhoda Grant lead a debate in March on the physical and psychological impacts of loneliness. In that debate, she recognised the great work of the Joe Cox Commission on Loneliness, who are trying to start a national conversation about the scale and impact of loneliness in the UK. 
And of course, Joe always pushed for cross-party work in Parliament and the Commission's following that example. I think if we can bring some of that spirit into our discussions on older people in our society and into the Parliament generally, that can only be a good thing. So once again, can I congratulate Christine Graham for highlighting the mutual benefit of older people and youngsters learning from each other and, more importantly, perhaps enjoying each other's company with generations working together. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Michelle Ballantyne. Ruth McGuire. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to my colleague Christine Graham for bringing this important topic to the Chamber and for raising awareness of the excellent work that the charity Generations Working Together do. Um, it's always a pleasure to hear about great examples of intergenerational collaboration that take place across Scotland. And I'm delighted to have the opportunity to highlight the inspiring work of Anna Makara, a dementia respite <coughs> centre in North Ayrshire. The centre strongly recognises the positive impact that intergenerational activities have on the well-being of their guests and has forged strong links with the local schools. St Bridget's Nursery School and St Bridget's Primary School attend on alternate Thursdays. They're affectionately referred to as Anamkara's Wee Pals and are very popular with the guests. Many of the guests even book particular dates for respite to coincide with when the wee ones come in. Come in. Guests at the centre teach the children songs like You Can I Shove Your Granny Off the Bus, <laughs> as well as games that they enjoyed when they were younger. And then their wee pals teach them all of their favourite songs and games in turn, resulting in great fun and enjoyment for everyone. The two generations also carry out joint craft work, as well as events such as teddy bears picnics and Burns poetry competitions. I'm told that the children always ask their teachers when they can go and play with their friends at Anamkara, and that when they leave, they go round each of the guests and give them a kiss and a hug. And for their part, guests consistently say that their time with the children brightens their day and leaves them with a deep sense of happiness. These simple remarks speak volumes of the mutual value and happiness of intergenerational friendship and collaboration. In addition to its wee pals, Anam Cara also welcomes sixth year volunteers who are completing their youth philanthropy initiative, Duke of Edinburgh candidates and modern apprentices. These older children are given the opportunity to undertake dementia training and dementia simulation suit training, which allows them to develop insight into and empathy for living with dementia. Two previous sixth year volunteers used this <coughs> knowledge in their university applications and are now studying medicine. Anamkara's rich and diverse intergenerational projects underline the mutual benefits to the children and to the guests of working together and how it enhances their health and well-being. I'd like to end my speech with some more good news. Before this debate, Anamkara didn't actually have any connection with the charity referred to in Christine's motion, Generations Working Together. Following my discussion with them in advance of this debate, they've now signed up to join their network and plan to send their staff on some of their training courses. They also plan to seek the charity's help on a current project which is designing a dementia training course suitable for early years. This is a clear demonstration of the charity's role as a focal point of intergenerational working across Scotland and as a provider of information, support and encouragement. I wish both Anam Cara and Generations Working Together every success for their future. Thank you. I call Michelle Ballantyne to be followed by Gail Ross. Michelle Ballantyne. Okay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And thank you to Christine Graham for bringing this important motion for debate this evening. I too would like to commend this valuable partnership between New Buyers Village and New Buyers Nursery, and in particular the work of Mel Scrimmage. Although it's still in its infancy, this project is going from strength to strength, and all those involved should be immensely proud of their achievements so far. I have not yet had the pleasure of visiting this project, but I wholeheartedly welcome the focus on inclusive intergenerational practice and the emphasis placed on developing the positive resources that young and old have to offer each other and those around them. The relationship between a child and a grandparent can be very special, but we know that intergenerational bonds need not be traditional or biological. There are striking similarities between the young and the old, those at either end of life's journey. They can live in the moment, focusing on the joy of being, not clock watching or stressing to fit as much into time as possible. 
But this project is much more than simply having fun and meeting new friends. It is much more than a means of energising young and old for a few hours a week. I believe the bonds that are forged are deeper, purer, more precious, and they can deliver lifelong benefits. Research shows that intergenerational contact can help children develop life skills, build their self-esteem and confidence, and we know how crucial it is to a child's well-being to develop resilience through positive caring role models and a strong sense of community. For those living in New Byers Village, interaction with the children could mean the re-emergence of a wonderful memory of their own or their children's childhood. It may give them a renewed sense of purpose and an opportunity to pass on skills and experience. Or it could represent a moment of unadulterated joy as they face up to the challenges at the end of life. Before I finish, I would also like to pay tribute to the work of generations working together, and in particular their efforts to tackle the deep-set issues of loneliness, vulnerability and discrimination facing older people. Their intergenerational work across Scotland, but particularly in East Lothian and Mid Lothian, is invaluable in breaking down barriers and improving opportunities for young and old from all backgrounds. I look forward to hearing more about the connections being built between New Buyers Village and New Buyers Nursery, and I wish everyone involved all the very best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. I call Gail Ross to be followed by John Scott. Gail Ross. Thank you, President Officer, um, and I would also like to welcome our guests in the gallery today and thank Christine Graham for bringing this debate here. Intergenerational working is becoming more and more recognised as a vital way of improving the physical, social and mental well-being in both elderly and young people. And during my last week of recess, I visited my local voluntary group in Wick to see Kirstine Campbell, who works for the Befriending Service. And she also does voluntary work with generations working together. And after speaking to her about it, even for a few minutes, it was evident that her passion for this drives her on to make a success of it. And judging by the level of interest in WIC, she is succeeding. Last year, she had seven girls from fifth and sixth year involved in the scheme, some working towards their Saltire Award, some their Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award. They visited people in the hospital, people that never had any visitors for various reasons, and some because their families lived some distance away. These people were vulnerable and very lonely. And this also fits in well with the NHS Highlands' current focus on loneliness. But the girls also gain from this process immensely. They gain confidence and conversation and communication skills. They heard stories that they would never have normally heard, and they made friends. This year, there are 20 fifth and sixth year pupils taking part, and they will be visiting local care homes as well as the hospital. And this increase just goes to prove the success of the scheme. Also during recess, I had a brilliant visit to the Brora Village Hub in Sutherland. The centre caters for elderly people and younger adults with learning difficulties. The visit was absolutely fantastic. I joined in with the craft group, I visited the men's shed and the kitchen, and I was even presented with a lovely drawing of a duck for my office. You can see there's a wee bit of a duck theme going on here today. There is some fantastic intergenerational work being carried out at the Hub under the leadership of manager Lindsay Tennant, as well as that of Kath and Esther from Engaging with Activity Community Interest Company. It's an excellent example of how to run a centre of this kind and should be used as a template for others in other parts of the constituency. The atmosphere was fun and friendly and the staff and volunteers clearly love their work. Other examples in my area include the two primary schools in Wick, which also undertake intergenerational work. Next month, pupils at NOS Primary School will be doing a project on grandparents, leading up to Grandparent Day on October the 1st. The younger children are tasked with finding a photograph of their grandparents at school, and the older children will be interviewing their grandparents about their school experiences. Over at the other school, Primary 6 in Newton Park Primary go to the Town and County Hospital to visit elderly patients there. These visits have proved invaluable for both the patients and the pupils. Presiding Officer, as we know, people are living longer and this is proving to be one of our most significant social challenges. But it's also an opportunity because people of all ages are assets to their communities and to society. 
and it's now becoming apparent that intergenerational work can bridge the gap that often appears between age groups. It can lead to people leading longer, healthier lives, maintain their independence for longer and keep the brain and senses stimulated. Generations Working Together says that it brings people together in purposeful, mutually beneficial activity. It promotes greater understanding and respect between generations and it contributes to building more cohesive communities. As a parliament and as a society, we have a duty to support and develop these ambitions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call John Scott to be followed by Sandra White. John Scott. Thank you, presiding officer. And can I begin by congratulating Christine Graham on securing her motion for debate today and on her speech, which highlights examples of generations working together in her constituency, as well as welcome to Parliament our guests from Gorebridge. The strong links created in just over a year between New Byers Nursery and the New Byers Village Community and the New Byers Care Home is a measure of the success of the project so far and a demonstration of the potential for further community intergenerational working. One could argue that where communities worked well in the past, particularly close-knit rural communities such as New Byers or Bar Hill, where I was born and grew up, that in such communities the interaction between generations already took place almost unnoticed. However, intergenerational working and generations working together as a concept identifies and formalises and builds on what worked to a greater or lesser extent in the past. Certainly, generations working together creates a transferable model for others to follow uh, and to consciously adopt. And I very much welcome Christine Graham drawing this community building best practice to our attention today. The benefits for all at Gorebridge and elsewhere are plain to see. And as Christine Graham's motion notes, with children and young people benefiting from the stimulation of adapting to a different environment and learning and interacting within that environment. Personal view is that with so much time being spent in front of screens by children and young people, this different activity is even more important and beneficial to them than it would have been only 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. What would have been regarded as normal physical intergenerational activity in my childhood is being diminished and lost in our new world of depending on social media from an early age for apparent social interaction. And Stuart Stevenson alluded to this. We are also becoming a more anxious society than we were, perhaps with good reason, and the reassurance of the physical contact and presence of older generations is genetically programmed into our minds to be a benefit to children and young people. For the elderly too, the benefit of having children and young people around them is also stimulating, as well as being enjoyable, reducing loneliness and isolation. Again, a growing problem, not just in our rural communities such as new buyers, but throughout Scotland. One well-known growing problem in all generations is mental health issues. And I'm very aware of this development from my changing constituency workload. Without doubt, one of the contributing factors to this emerging issue is too little caring human interaction, currently being driven again in part by a dependency on social media. In my constituency, generations working together highlight the Truden Coastal Rowing Project which supports inter-community boat building and rowing competitions. Boat building participants met every Monday to Friday for five months and worked together to build a 22-foot wooden St. Alice skiff. And this type of project is now being taken forward by the Duke of Edinburgh Award team in South Ayrshire. Self-evidently, the benefit for pupils are learning new skills, working with others outside the school environment, and developing self-esteem and team working skills. The benefits for the adults of, of my constituency are many, driven by satisfaction at passing on knowledge to the next generation. In turn, this engenders a sense of connecting with young people in our community, with buddy relationships being developed, which of course develops the concept, again, of intergenerational work 
and intergenerational knowledge transfer. So today, Presiding Officer, I again congratulate Christine Graham on sharing and highlighting this concept of generations working together. And I believe there is much more to be done in this area for the benefit of the young and old alike. Thank you. Thank you, and I call on Sandra White to be followed by the Minister. Sandra White. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. And can I also uh, congratulate Christine Graham for uh, the resolution, the motion which is here before us today. It's something which is very close to not just my heart, but everyone's heart as well. And I also want to welcome uh, the people in the gallery. And I know that uh, Bill and Rose from the Scottish Senior Alliances in the gallery too had a very busy day. We had a cross-party group of older people today. So I'm going to mention some of the issues which was raised there. And uh, Katie from Generations Working Together was sitting there as well and uh, put forward some questions which I think, uh, you know, I hopefully we answered in the in the committee meeting as well. Uh, Generations Working Together is based in my constituency in Wilson Street in the Merchant City. So it's just a toddle along for me to go along and visit, which I've promised that I will do. And I, I, I say toddle uh, basically with the inverted commas in, in that respect. Uh, basically, you know, I think we've heard some fabulous stories of uh, what's happening throughout uh, Scotland in various constituencies. And certainly in my own constituency, there's many primary schools going and visit the care homes, but there's also Duke of Edinburgh Ward, has already been mentioned, the Princess Trust and others, the Gill Guys, Scouts, Boys Brigade, all help out as well. And uh, one area which sticks in my mind was uh, Princess Trust, where a group of young people actually landscaped the whole garden in one of the care homes, but the actual, the people who lived in the care home, they, they were there, they picked the flowers, they picked the bushes, they picked the trees, and they were there to help to plant as well. And that was working together. And it looked absolutely fantastic. And the one thing I think which comes out to me, and Christine Graham and others have mentioned it as well, it's not just what one, you know, one generation gets out of it, it's what both generations get out of it as well. As John has just said in his contribution, we learn from each other. Uh, I remember in school, possibly others will too, that we had like domestic science, as you might call it. Now, I speak to my own daughter and I try to pass my great cooking skills on to her. <laughs> but uh, I honestly couldn't say whether she has actually been better than me or gained some of the cooking skills. But this is it, the issues which to me are very important where the, the younger generation learn from the older generation and through learning from their skills, they actually respect them more because it's something, and John did raise this in, in the last couple of minutes of his contribution, it's something that uh, is desperately needed, I think, in some uh, aspects of our society now is respect for everyone. And I think the intergenerational work actually pushes that respect way out there and it helps everyone, young people and older people also. But I can't finish without giving a plug for generations working together and the work that they do. Anyone wants to contact them, they'll certainly lead them to any groups that are working in their area and give them help with volunteering, etc. And another plug, which obviously was one very successful uh, last night, was Cycling Without Age which absolutely is fantastic. And we had them at the cross-party group today, uh, giving a, not a demonstration, but a video of just how this is so helpful. And I'm so pleased that the Scottish Government has said they will look into this and back this, cycling without age. I've met with Fraser and others. But imagine if you're in a care home and you've not been getting out and about for even a couple of weeks or a number of months, the joy you get when you're actually out and about in your constituency, seeing the changes where you used to live, whereas before you could walk about or get the bus, you're on the bike. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. So we plug for Fraser and uh, Cycling Without Age. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And can I ask the Minister Mark McDonald to conclude the debate? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by congratulating Christine Graham on bringing this debate uh, to the Chamber? And can I join others in welcoming uh, our guests to the gallery and uh, take the opportunity to thank them for their hospitality earlier today, of which more later. Um, I'm pleased that Christine Graham has commended the intergenerational project uh, between New Buyers Village and New Buyers Nursery uh, in this evening's debate. And the Scottish Government is delighted to support and encourage uh, intergenerational projects across the country. Indeed, intergenerational practice aims to promote a more positive attitude to ageing amongst people of all ages, uh, countering negative attitudes about and between younger and older generations, ensuring balanced workplaces where employers see the value of a diversity uh, in age and inspiring a care workforce uh, for the future. Um, 
There have been a number of uh, contributions in this evening's debate, and uh, I'd just like to begin by thanking Stuart Stevenson for uh, his continuous reminding me of my comparative youth. Um, it's probably a good thing that Ross Greer and Kate Forbes weren't in the debate this evening on that basis. Uh, although I would just like to say that he spent some of his uh, speech talking about the uh, constant questions about what it was like in his day. Uh, and I say that even in my comparative youth, I have found this to occur to me as well, uh, as when I took a photo of my nieces and nephews to use up the spool uh, on a disposable camera and then had to explain to them the concept of waiting for photos to be developed before they could actually see what had just been taken. Um, but as uh, Christine Graham pointed out, uh, I visited uh, the New Buyers Intergenerational Project this morning uh, and saw this uh, inspiring project uh, firsthand. Uh, modesty precludes me uh, from talking about how magnificent my performance in the beanbag throwing was, um, but uh, I think it was uh, fantastic to take part in the potted sports uh, and engage with the children, uh, the elderly residents uh, and the staff uh, who are filled with enthusiasm about the project and the potential for the future. Indeed, Bessie, who is in the gallery, uh, was speaking to me earlier um, and she told me that when uh, residents uh, are waiting for the children to arrive, um, they are often, you know, uh, feeling very anxious about waiting for the children to arrive and then their world is brightened as the children enter uh, into the facility uh, and it is soon full uh, of joy and laughter and that was certainly the atmosphere that uh, welcomed me uh, as I arrived at the project today and I left knowing uh, that the support for intergenerational projects is the right thing to do uh, for children, uh, for the elderly and for the wider community. Now, I acknowledge that uh, Scotland has a lot to learn from countries like America, Japan and China who have been running intergenerational projects for years. Uh, London will also be opening its doors to its first full-time intergenerational nursery uh, later this month. Uh, but there are some great examples in Scotland of intergenerational work with children, particularly from early learning and childcare and primary school settings. And we're keen to promote and showcase best practice. And it was good to hear examples being brought forward by members, including Gail Ross uh, and Ruth Maguire, who highlighted examples from within their constituencies. People of all ages and in all communities across Scotland can experience social isolation and loneliness, a point uh, Elaine Smith noted in her contribution. And that's something we as a government take seriously. Uh, the Scottish Government is supporting Generations Working Together, a charity who provide information, deliver support and encourage involvement to benefit all of Scotland's generations by working, learning, volunteering and living together. Through our equality budget this financial year, we're funding £70,000 to the organisation to deliver its Opening Doors project. The Opening Doors project seeks to build strong and mutually beneficial working partnerships with local and national organisations and groups who work with people, including the elderly, who might be suffering discrimination, isolation and loneliness. It creates more opportunities within communities uh, for people to connect and build relationships between the generations, a point that was uh, well made by both Michelle Ballantyne uh, and Sandra White in this evening's debate. Uh, through our Year of Young People in 2018, uh, the Scottish Government is considering how intergenerational activity can form part of the equality and discrimination theme. And in addition to working with generations working together, we will also work in partnership with other organisations representing uh, the elderly to encourage collaboration and engagement with youth organisations throughout the year. We produced Scotland's third three-year national dementia strategy in June, which continues our focus on supporting and promoting a rights-based and inclusive approach to improving services and support for people with dementia. Uh, this approach is embedded within our continuing national support for implementation of the Promoting uh, Excellence Dementia Skills Framework in education, training uh, and development of the health, social services and housing workforce. Promoting excellence is there to help local services implement the standards of care for dementia, including standards on enabling people with dementia across all care settings to remain included in their local community, including through intergenerational activity. Some examples include Alzheimer Scotland's National Dementia Friends Scotland initiative, it includes partnership work with Young Scot in developing awareness raising initiatives for use in schools. This is in addition to a range of activity with school, local schools taken by Alzheimer Scotland's network of dementia advisors. Uh, also in Prestwick, uh, as part of dementia community work, there's been partnership work with Alzheimer Scotland to run dementia friend sessions with local school children. Also as a specific example of cross-generation work, a Prestwick themed board game including a historical focus in being, uh, is being developed by local school children, a history group 
and some local care home residents. And it was heartening to hear Ruth Maguire speaking of the Anamkara Respite Centre in her constituency and the Anamkara's wee pals, who sound like a cracking bunch of kids uh, bringing happiness to residents. Uh, John Scott mentioned um, the issues around social media and reliance upon devices and also the, the anxious nature of society and I would commend to him and other members uh, the Away and Play initiative which was launched during the summer uh, by Inspiring Scotland. I attended the launch event in Dundee which is a, a campaign designed to encourage uh, children and young people to make, more to make more of the opportunities of outdoor play and learning uh, and to actually uh, grasp the risks that are associated with it rather than to shy away from them. So if members wanted to get behind that campaign, uh, I would be more than happy if they did so. We know uh, that high quality early learning and childcare plays a key role in improving outcomes for children. That's why we're committed to doubling the amount of funded hours over the, uh, by the end of this parliament. Uh, and we are placing quality at the heart of our approach. We're developing a quality action plan which will publish next month and over the summer we've been working with stakeholders who know what drives quality and what more we need to do to strengthen this. Now that action plan will contain a series of actions to ensure that early learning and childcare delivers a high quality experience for our children. One of these actions will be to promote learning from ELC centres of innovation, centres like the one I visited this morning. And we'll make sure that centres carrying out innovative and exciting work that has a positive impact on children are supported to celebrate and share their ideas with other settings. And it was interesting to hear, well, well, I was just about to mention Christine Graham. If I have time to take the intervention, I will take the intervention. Christine Graham. Thank you. Uh, forgive, me. forgive me, you were rattling along perfectly all right. But you mentioned, you were mentioned uh, centres such as what happens at New Bar's um, Care Centre and New Bar's Nursery. Do I take it you're specifically going to see if this can be replicated throughout Scotland because it was the physical interaction as well as the conversations between the children and the residents that was so important that people who hadn't moved perhaps a great deal during that day, and I know what that feels like, actually were, were more mobile, becoming more mobile. Minister. I think it would be fair to say that what I saw today, I'm very keen to encourage uh, development of. And um, I think what we've heard tonight in the debate is that this... Uh, while this is an, an excellent and innovative approach, it is happening in other locations as well. And what we need to try and do uh, is to join these things up a little bit better because sometimes great work is happening, but we don't often hear about it and spread that message as widely as we could. I was just about to mention Christine Graham before she preempted me and say that she spoke about the Channel 4 documentary, which I thought was very interesting. But today, uh, while speaking uh, to Mel at the uh, event today, it was brought to my attention that that programme had focused almost exclusively on the outcomes for the older people without also focusing on the benefits that were brought to the children as part of that approach. And we want to ensure uh, and acknowledge that there are benefits on both sides uh, of this approach and we can take that, take that forward. So can I just uh, begin, uh, begin to close, presiding officer, uh, by uh, congratulating Christine Graham for bringing this debate to the parliament, uh, to congratulate and encourage the continuation of the project that is taking place in her constituency and the other projects that have been highlighted this evening, and to reiterate my commitment to look very carefully at these approaches uh, as we develop our plans in relation to early learning and childcare, and look at what lessons we can learn and apply as we roll out our expansion uh, of funded early learning and childcare. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. Thank the Minister and all members for the contribution. That concludes the debate and I now close today's meeting of Parliament.